Access to Independence. I'm here to talk to you about our services, you know, who we are, our services, and with a focus on assistive devices. So we are one of eight centers for independent living in Wisconsin. That's part of a nationwide network of independent living centers. We serve Dane, Dodge, Columbia, and Greene County. And then the seven other centers cover the rest of the state. We are nonprofit and we are consumer driven, which means that the majority of our board and staff are individuals with disabilities. Our definition of disability is a little bit different than, uh, say, the government's definition. So we define disability as any condition an acute or chronic illness or an injury that impacts a person's ability to be independent in their home, community, and or working environment. So maintaining, obtaining employment or getting promotions. We do not require any type of documentation. Um, and some examples of a condition could be something like arthritis, an illness could be something um, like COVID maybe, and an injury, you know, if you have a bone fracture or something like that. Now I'm going to talk about our core services. So this is federally mandated that we provide these services that I'll be talking about. So if you have somebody who lives outside of our service area, their independent living center that serves their area would provide these same services in a similar fashion as we do. So this first service is available to anyone in the community, so not just individuals with disabilities. This information and referral, you call us or you walk into our center with a disability related question. We know the answer. If we don't know the answer, we know who would you know, be able to help you. So information and resources, then like I said, if we can't assist with the issue at hand, we will make a referral to the appropriate agency. So some topics that we see uh, in this service are housing, transportation, resources, community supports and services, finding adaptive equipment, and our assistive technology loan program. And there's many more topics. These are just kind of our most common ones. Now, the rest of the, the services I'll be talking about are available to only individuals with disabilities. Um, and again, that's any illness, condition, or injury, acute or chronic, um, that would impact your ability to be independent. So our peer support service is provided by staff and trained volunteers who have lived experience. So that could be an individual with a disability themselves or perhaps their caregiver for a family member or a friend with a disability. So somehow they have some lived personal experience with the disability uh, realm. They um, work to empower the individual they're working with. This is usually a one-on-one -on -one service. The peer mentors can assist an individual with learning how to cope with his or her disability, learning independent living skills, improving their self-advocacy. Um, so they use their lived experience to help individuals um, with their lived experience. We have our next services, skills training. This is what I primarily do at Access. A staff member will provide an assessment of the skill level at the beginning of services. They will provide training and support for the development, maintenance, and growth of a variety of skills. So some examples of skills training that I personally commonly see would be budgeting, cooking and meal planning, organization type skills. Basically, if it's a skill that you need to be able to live independently, um, we can provide that skills training. We also offer transition services. This is a new service that we were asked to provide a few years ago per the federal mandates. So there's three sub categories of transition services. The first one 
is supporting individuals in nursing homes or related facilities who wish to transition back into the community. So something we've been seeing recently is an individual will have some sort of injury, let's say breaking a hip, and they're put in the nursing home for purposes of rehab, but then they're finding it difficult to transition out of that nursing home back into independent living or assisted living. Um, you know, they don't quite want to be in that nursing home anymore now that they're all healed up, but they're just finding some difficulty kind of getting out. So we'll work with the nursing home social worker, the medical team to address any concerns that might be keeping that person in the nursing home. And if we're able to um, negate those concerns or find alternatives, uh, we, you know, we help people get back into the community of choice. The second service is kind of related. It's diversion of individuals who are at risk of placement in a facility and they wish to remain in you know, the independent living, uh, perhaps senior living, um, or assisted living. They're not quite ready to go into a nursing home quite yet. So this could be something like an individual who has had a recent fall and they're being, um, it's being suggested to them that they move into a higher level of care, but they're like, no, I wanna live, I wanna stay in my home. So we um, you know, might do a safety assessment, we might work with their family and the individual to again address some of those concerns and see what we can do to um, you know, improve safety and stuff like that. And the third section is supporting youth who are plugged into the special education system uh, as they transition out of their high school or you know comparable education journey, um, you know they lose all of those supports that they had in high school. So we help them if that's skills training, finding housing, whatever that might be, to uh, help them maintain the independence that they wish to have. Then we have advocacy. So we do uh, both individual and group advocacy. So um, an example of like individual advocacy services might be supporting a person standing up for their rights. So per the ADA, individuals with disabilities have certain rights in terms of being able to access public buildings and stuff. That doesn't always mean that people follow the ADA, so we assist individuals in you know, bringing up concerns <coughs> related to stuff like that. That can include communicating with businesses and public officials about disability related concerns. Again, we quite frequently see buildings that are required to be accessible per the ADA, not quite meeting the standard of accessibility, so we'll work with the business you know, before like, lodging an official complaint or something like that. We also educate the greater community about the disability community, things that impact the disability community that individuals without disabilities might not be aware of. We help people with disabilities get the supports and services they need, so that could look like getting accommodations at work. Uh, if someone has a child with a disability, getting them the appropriate IEP, through their school, stuff like that. We also uh, provide advocacy at the state level, so meeting with legislators and other government officials to you know, hopefully improve some issues that are um, concerning to the disability community. So for example, in-home support has been a problem. There's a shortage of qualified workers come into people's homes to assist them with um, supportive home care. So we're working on trying to raise wages and benefits and stuff so that that crisis can hopefully be averted. There, we have a few trained staff on our team who provide safety and accessibility assessments for homes. And we also have a fee-for-service accessibility assessment for workplaces and other uh, like public uh, work, uh, like buildings and stuff. We just did one for concerts on the square. <laughs> kind of switching gears, we're gonna start talking about assistive technology now. So 
The Wislam and Telework programs are available through the state of Wisconsin. They're loan programs available to Wisconsin residents. The applicant must be a, per a person with a disability or be someone applying on behalf of you know, an individual with disability. That could look like a parent applying on behalf of their child. Um, this loan program can be used for assistive technology, home modifications, vehicle adaptions, or accommodations for employment. The applications must be completed through access to independence or the individual's independent living center based on where they live. So this is a market-based interest, uh, market-based interest rate loan, just with a little different um, qualifications in terms of like credit scores and income. So if an individual is perhaps a low low income individual, this is what we recommend. Um, as an alternate instead of like a traditional bank loan. For our assistive technology loan program, we have over a thousand assistive devices that are free to try. Most of these items are available for a short-term loan. These items can include wheelchairs, walkers, and canes, amplified phones, kitchen tools, um, things like shoehorns, uh, you know, pretty much anything. We define assistive technology as any piece of equipment that helps the user perform an activity of daily living. AT helps people live more independently. It can improve safety. Our equipment can be low, no tech, low tech, or high tech. We personally like the no tech items, less chance of something going wrong. Our staff can assist you with selecting the right device for your situation, your condition, whatever you're presenting to us, we can help you. No, we're trained, we can make the recommendations. If you borrow a product from our program and you really like it at solving some issue in your life, we can help you find the same or an equivalent product for you to purchase. This is really great for somebody who, let's say, you know, they've broken a bone and they need a wheelchair, but you don't want to drop a thousand dollars on a wheelchair to use for like six weeks. This is where we come in. Now we're going to talk about some examples of AT. I've selected some to kind of cover all sorts of aspects of daily living. I have some items here with me not all of them, but this first one is really great for anyone who takes medications and might have a little difficulty with remembering if they took it, um, you know, stuff like that. So this uh, attaches to the top of your prescription or over-the-counter medication bottle, and then this particular version will reset each time the pill bottle is open. So let's say you're supposed to take Tylenol at 9 a.m. and you're like, oh my gosh, it's 10 a.m., did I take that? You would be able to see, you know, if it's been an hour since it was last open, okay, you took it at 9 a.m. If it's been quite a few hours, then okay, you gotta take your Tylenol now. This is, um, there are other tops that will have an alarm. So at 9 a.m. when it's time to take your Tylenol, it will beep incessantly until you open the bottle. So there's tons of different varieties to help with specific situations. One of our items that I have with me is our speech adjust a tone. So this is an amplifier. It amplifies from 40 decibels to 120 decibels. There are six adjustable frequency compensation controls for bass, mid, and treble range. So for some individuals, they have global hearing loss. It's you know, hearing loss across all frequency ranges. For some individuals, they might have the lower tones or higher tone hearing loss. That's where this comes in. You can adjust it according to your specific uh, hearing loss situation. So this works with non-amplified phones. So if you have a standard landline, you're having some issues hearing, 
the person who's calling you, you plug this into the phone jack and it just adds that amplification and the compensation controls without having to purchase a new piece of equipment. Does that work for like for televisions too or is that just for phones? So this particular model looks like, well, there's an audio jack, so it might it might work for headphones. So I guess, oh no, yeah, it says radio TV. So yes, this particular model yeah, could like could it. be used um, for TVs. That's definitely a common complaint that we hear from people. Um, so yeah, we have this, and there's some other items that I haven't brought with me today, such as a pocket pocket talker, which is basically. Um, a little square thing with a microphone that you can plug in directly to your TV then you wear some headphones to get the sound that way. Okay. This item is fantastic. For example, I lose my keys all the time. I would like to purchase one for myself. So this um, advanced technology tracks up to 130 feet. It's Bluetooth. We would help you set that up if you're not very familiar with Bluetooth technology. So this particular model comes with four color-coded receivers, double-sided adhesive, and keychain rings. So, um, you know, let's say like perhaps you lose your keys all the time. You would attach, uh, let's say, the green button to your keychain ring, and then when you lose your keys, you would press the corresponding color uh, button then you just follow the beeping sound. That is very handy. So this could be attached to your TV remote. On the product listing on our software, it says you can attach it to a pet collar. If you have issues finding your cat or something like that, not quite sure, but. Then we have, this is an example of a low tech piece of AT. So this is a universal pen holder. It's Weighted. It adds some weight and thickness, so it can help if an individual has tremors in their hands. The weight kind of counteracts the tremors. If someone is dealing with some arthritis or some hand pain, uh, holding a thicker instrument can help relieve some of that hand pain. Um, and this fits like standard size pens and pencils. Uh, you just use an Allen wrench to unscrew it and stick the pen or pencil in there. One item we have from our <coughs> AT collection is this Robo Twist automatic jar opener. It adjusts to fit most jar tops and it, this is often used with individuals with diminished grip or hand strength or really anyone because those darn jars are just yeah. so <laughs> so tight on there. So this can reduce some frustration in the kitchen. Um, it can reduce, perhaps you always have to ask, ask someone to open your jars. Uh, this can just kind of improve some independence and, and safety too. I don't know, I've tried to open some jars with like knives and stuff. that's not good. So this can improve some safety as well. One, another example of a no tech item is this button hook and fastener so you can easily button um, clothing with this end on here this end is a zipper polar upper thing so this is just very nice again individuals with um, the rheumatoid arthritis or some dexterity issues might often find it difficult to dress themselves. So this is one of those things that adds some independence. Um, you know, a lot of people don't really like when someone else has to dress them, so it's kind of adding some, some dignity. Having to, you know, have someone dress you, that, that's a difficult change. So um, this is a good, a good no-tech example of something like that. All right, we have a bed shaker alarm. This is really useful for individuals who are deaf or hard of hearing. 
or really deep sleepers if you find yourself sleeping through your alarm. This is really great. So I have an alert system here to kind of demonstrate. Whoops. All right, so I'm gonna hit the test button here. It also flashes. I'm gonna turn it off now so it doesn't vibrate itself off the table. But this is really great. You, you stick it under your pillow or under your, your like sheet, your bed sheet, and it will wake you up via the vibration instead of listening for an alarm. Um, as you can see, there's also a flashing light. So this particular alert system can be used with a doorbell, with a baby monitor, with phones, hello, um, house alarms, you know, anything like that. It can be plugged in. So this is a, a multifaceted alarm system. We're gonna turn that light off now. All right. And again, this is something that we would help you set up, kind of give you uh, some tips and tricks of how to use it. And then if you're, you know, if you bought one of these for yourself and there's an issue with it, you can call us and we can try and troubleshoot it as well. All right, I don't have this particular piece of equipment with me, but this leg lifter, we have a larger loop where you put your foot in, and then there's this rod, and then a smaller loop where you put your hand in, and it can help an individual with limited strength or mobility in their leg to move or reposition their leg safely. This could be used when you're getting in or out of bed, in or out of a wheelchair, you know, any other situation where you would need to lift your leg, but maybe you don't quite have the strength to do that. And it can help with some independence and improved safe, safety. Uh, it's made of a nylon webbing with a metal rod. I'll be honest, when I first saw this in the office, I thought it was a dog leash. It's not. It's great though. It's we we frequently loan this out to individuals who have had knee replacement surgery where they're supposed to you know keep their leg or any other thing where they're supposed to keep their leg straight. It can just help, you know, just due to the design, it can help kind of force the leg to stay straight in those times where you're repositioning or transitioning yourself. All right. We have a voice activated dialer. Again, this works with landline phones. So you plug it in. Uh, there's there's cords that I didn't bring with me, but you plug it in. Um, plug it into the line, plug it into the phone. You turn it on, you program it. Again, we would help with the programming. And then it's voice activated, so you can either tell it to dial a person. So could have a dial of your daughter Beth, you know, it's like a um, speed dial but voice activated, or you could have it dial a phone number just by saying the numbers like 331, 625, something like that. So good for individuals if there's a tremor in the hand, so pushing buttons is difficult, um, or some limited vision, you know, you don't have to squint at your phone. Um, so this is, this is very good for those situations like that. All right, here's another piece of equipment I don't believe I have with me, but this is um, an amplifiable phone ring signaler. So it can be amplified up to 100 decibels, and this super bright yellow light will flash when your phone rings, so you're not relying solely on hearing it. You can also have that visual input. You just plug this into your existing phone line, plug the phone into the ringer. It's not battery operated, so you don't have to worry about that. And kind of keeping with the phone <laughs> uh, trend we got going on here, this is a line powered ported telephone. It has a 40 decibel call volume amplification. So 40 decibels would be for someone with perhaps some moderate hearing loss. 
When you make a call on the phone, perhaps you have difficulty catching every word, but you're not quite at the point where you, you're unable to hear anything. It's you know more of that moderate range. So this one also has big buttons for easy visibility. Again, it can help individuals if there's some um, you know issues with like a tremor or something like that, visual impairments. And this is hearing aid compatible. All right, then in a similar vein, we have our photo dialer. So again, 40 decibel call volume amplification. It has memory picture button keys. This is very useful if an individual is living with memory loss or dementia. So you basically program it to speed dial, but then you have a picture of your loved ones or friends or doctor, you know, some people that you call frequently so you don't have to remember the numbers. Um, so speed dialing, but with pictures. And again, this is here in a compatible. We have our oven rack push pull puller. Say that five times fast. <laughs> so this is used to push or pull the oven racks in or out as you're cooking or baking. This is um, kind of a safety improvement tool. Again, low tech, very low chance of this breaking. You're just not, you know, you don't need to get as close to the oven. You're not necessarily reaching into the oven. It can be safer than pot holders, especially if there's some concerns with coordination. This is uh, very great for individuals who are in wheelchairs who might not be able to get closer, as close as needed to the oven when using pot holders, it just kind of extends your reach. And there are some versions that are even longer than this one. Now, I've been talking a lot about landlines. Landlines are kind of going out of fashion. So we do have some cell phone um, related amplifiers and other things like this. So this is an example of a cell phone amplifier. It connects via Bluetooth to your cell phone. Again, if Bluetooth isn't your thing, we can help you set it up. And there is also an option, I believe, to plug it in with a cord so you're not worried about the Bluetooth. This will amplify your cell phone volume up to 40 decibels. So again, for some mild to moderate hearing loss, this also features the adjustable tone boost kind of like this guy that we talked about earlier, and it does have a built-in T-coil mode for compatibility with hearing aids. So cell phones are really great, but sometimes they're quite quiet. So if you find that you can't hear when you're making calls on your cell phone, we would recommend something like this, or they do make cell phones specifically for individuals with some hearing concerns that are amplified more than a standard cell phone. I have, oh, you know what, to talk about this, if you are finding yourself in the position where you need an amplified phone, an amplified cell phone, there is a program called the TEP voucher program, Telecommunications Equipment Program Purchasing Program. So we can help you with that application. It's a grant, no need to pay it back. Individuals who are hard of hearing, deaf, deaf blind, or have other like, motor related disabilities who need specialized equipment for telecommunications um, are eligible for various dollar amounts based on their needs. Um, so like something like this, let's say it costs $50, the voucher would give you $100. Um, so this is free under the voucher. One example of a fun new type of walker. We just got this one in um, our loan program, this easy fold and go walker. Super lightweight, super portable, uh, easy to travel with. Can apparently fit in an overhead bin when you're flying. This is meant for basic stability, not full support. So if you're someone who needs to put your full weight onto a walker when you're using it, we would recommend something else. 
But this is a good alternative to one of those basic aluminum uh, frame walkers because it, it folds up a lot smaller and I think it's about half the weight. So very easy to lift up, load in your car, you get to your destination and you can pull it out quite easily. And our last piece of AT is an aluminum quad cane. I tend to recommend this for individuals who have some additional stability concerns. This quad design allows for greater weight bearing and stability compared to single point canes. And I don't know about y'all if you've ever had experience of chasing after a falling cane, but this solves that problem because it'll stand upright. So that's it for me talking at you guys. This is our uh, contact information. I'll also have some brochures I can give to you. Um, we're located on Milwaukee Street, right across from the East Side Woodman's. We do home visits as well. So if you know coming to our office would pose a problem, we want our services to be accessible as possible so we can come to you as well. We have a website down there and our main number. And again, I'll pass out the brochures with the contact information on it. Forgot if I mentioned, but all of our services are free to the consumer, so no cost to uh, you know for anything. So that's that's what I have. If there's any questions, I can hopefully answer them. Now, do you have like a catalog of all the items that you have? We so, do not have a physical catalog. We do have a website. Um, that we use, that the state uses for the AT loan program. In general, it tends to be easier if the individual who's interested in the AT loan program calls us and it explains the problems. We can make product recommendations. You know, if the person has a specific product in mind, we either have that specific product in our loan uh, closet or we have an equivalent or a product that you know performs the same function. Yeah. I'm amazed. This sounds like a fantastic program. I'm so, so glad that uh, you did this. This place would have been packed had the weather. Oh gosh, yeah. I was hearing the rumbling this morning. I'm like, it, oh. it was on the, and it was on the weather news that this was going yeah. to happen. So I'm sure that gave a lot of people away. But this is something that every elderly person needs to know about. I mean, because we're all going to need something at some at some point. Wow, this looks very good. Um, <laughs> In, in winter time, I always have trouble putting on my socks. I can't oh, sure. reach down. Oh, sure. We have something for that. <laughs> okay. Good. Um, especially like those compression stockings. It's like a full workout getting yeah. those dang things on. So we do have some uh, products that can. Uh, there's one. It's kind of like a plastic, like half circle that you put the sock on and then you put your foot in. It kind of helps a little bit. And then in terms of the compression stockings, there is a specific product that's kind of hard to explain, but you basically put the stocking on the product and then you like roll it up your foot using, it's hard to explain. Anyway. Yeah. I'd be interested too in, in walkers. I don't need one now, but both my brother and sister had them and they would always be Punching over. Oh yeah, that's kind of good. Straight. Yeah, that's kind of causing like a new problem there. Yeah. Then you're gonna get pain in your in your shoulders, in your back, in your neck. So we do. Um, we're not trained occupational or physical therapists, but we do try and fit people. You know, most most walkers and canes are height adjustable, so we do try and make sure that it's a good fit. There are some walkers that are specific for tall individuals, like over six yeah. foot, and then yeah. there are some, I believe, that are for you know, shorter individuals, like under five foot. Yeah, that's wonderful. I, I would imagine maybe only one in ten elderly people know about this problem. This is great. I'm just flabbergasted that this exists. Because I, 
I'm 81, but I have a sister 91. So sure. I, I know all the items that she needs. And she just now, this past month, went into assisted living. And she always tells me every day what problems she has and sure. what, what, what I will probably encounter. Oh, uh, sure, yeah. And right now it's the hearing that, that's yeah. starting. I can't hear yeah. many times what the people are saying on television. Sure. That's, uh, yeah, you know, that. throughout the lifespan, thing, new things come up, new problems yeah. arise. Um, so, you know, we do serve all ages, and we do see a lot of these no-tech or low-tech items are really helpful for our elder population. Yeah. Just kind of solving some of those yeah. small problems that over the course of the day, they just add up and make you exhausted, you know, yeah. just exhausted dealing with them. So like some of these things, even if someone's in assisted living, it can still be useful. Um, like my grandparents are in assisted living. Something like this is still helpful to them. You know, not having to wait for a CNA or other staff member to come help you button up your shirt. Um, you know, that's something that they can still do safely. So that's something that they might use. Same with like the jar opener. Just those little things that we could add to someone's life so they feel more in control of their situation. Oh, very good. Yeah, excellent presentation. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Perfect.